Lotarg, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout. You guys know the rules before we get to the PR though, please click like down below, help keep the likes higher than the dislikes, we don't always do that, and only you can make that happen. I would greatly appreciate it if you did. Thank you so much. Now over to the lifts, we did 11 inch box squat with 33 pounds of chains. And for those of you who are looking, yeah, it's a good three inches below parallel. It's nice and deep. Uh, we're going to a very deep position here. And the whole idea is to train myself to box squat again very deep. Because when I got my box squat up just over 500 off the 12 inch box, what happened? Came in, squatted 522, and then a month or so later, squatted 552, albeit maybe an inch high. So we're going to come through and do the same thing. We're going to get my 11 inch box squat using a slightly wider stance uh, up past 500. Right? We want to get it well above 500. And once we can do that, we know that my squat will have gone up again. Also, I'm using that wider stance because when I take the, the narrow stance I normally do, and a lot of guys are like, oh, that's a, that's a wide stance. It's not. That's a very narrow stance, the one I do. I don't know why people think it's wide. Uh, that's crazy if you think that's a wide stance that I, I do, like on that 552 squat. I need to be about four or five inches wider than that, which is what I'm practicing with here. I can get deeper. Okay, that's my maximum range of motion with that other one. I'm basically hitting bottom. And if it's questionable depth, that's just where my hips are. With a wider stance, I can go deeper. So we'll build power in this off the box, and we build that power. And I'm going to ramp up various bands and chains rotating through them as I did before to build my box squat off the 12 inch box now i stopped there could i have probably gone a little heavier yeah i stopped at 475 a uh, number of reasons number one i'm back to using the straight bar i want to mess with just a straight bar for a bit i feel like a lot of the benefits of the buffalo bar when i use a high bar and i'm in a nar very narrow grip which i'm good at narrow grip squatting as far as my grip i can get in really tight that way i feel like it doesn't give me the benefit there in fact it's easier on my wrist with the straight bar I need to get used to squatting with it again. And so I didn't want to push it too far, but that felt pretty good. That felt well above 90%. That was definitely a solid training max, at least 95%. Could I have maybe tried to hit 495? Maybe, but I felt like it would have been really, really grindy. And I want to get used to this box using different bands and chains. We're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger off the deep box. And we're going to hypertrophy all the muscles of the squat and keep moving forward with it. And when everything is strong again, we'll pull the box back out and we'll start testing the back squat, just like I did before. But this time we're gonna get deeper. We're gonna address all the weak links going in, more and more and more. It's gonna be, again, quads, hamstrings, hips, everything. But it's gonna be more quad work. Um, I went ahead and I did my good mornings. I did a little weight bump again. I'm now doing 155 for sets of 20, whereas when I used to do, you know, 135. Actually, this is new 155, guys. I'm sorry, it's 145 now. So I'm up 10 pounds for what I normally do sets of 20s with. And we're just kind of micro loaded up. Uh, and it actually felt relatively challenging on the last set. So again, this is actually somewhat hard. This isn't that easy for me, even though it's a lightweight. We start doing sets of 20. I've been micro loading up these 20 rep sets with fractional plates. I'm gonna keep growing from it. This should help my squat and my deadlift. Should bring my deadlift back up too. Should definitely help because again, we're addressing both the, the mid back where I feel the deadlifts when I miss and then we're addressing the hamstrings which we know is the real weak link. I'm disproportionately strong with my back versus my hamstrings on all these exercises. So this hits both. And I wanna always do this first because this is gonna be a, a very, very important movement. So I'm gonna do it on all my squat and deadlift days immediately after the big lift. Then we'll go into the quad versus hamstring specialization. Because people say, well, isn't this hamstring? Well, yeah, to a large extent, sure. But it's not full hamstring specialization, really. Because it works the back, the glutes, everything. But I want to keep progressing on it. And I want to keep it at sets of 20. I want to keep a lot of my leg stuff down near sets of 20. I mean, my glute and ham raises may not be that high. Because I'm going to need more tension on those, and it's hard to do 20s. Uh, but they're not going to be that high. But this other stuff will for a face. And I'm going to go back towards, sticking towards 10s for upper body other than the smaller movements. 
which you'll see when we get to the pen lay rows today. And tens with the axle bar with, with basically 10 rep maxes, what I've calculated to be, was tough. We'll get to that in a minute. But we have to build all of this up, right? All these muscles are going to be involved in the squat and the deadlift. So again, good mornings first. And that's mainly because right now I need to make sure that deadlift comes up faster. And the good morning is a phenomenal supplemental lift for the box squat. People can argue about whether it brings up the back squat all day long. Ben Pollock thinks it does as a raw, ridiculously strong power lifter. He thinks that it's one of the best for both lifts, right? Well, we know it's a phenomenal lift for the box squat. And I need to bring my box squat up, and when my box squat goes up, my back squat goes up. We have seen that proven by me. That is not even in question. Because when I can take nine months off from doing a back squat and come in and hit a big PR by doing nothing but nine months of box squatting, we know it carries over. You know, when I hit a 30 pound heavier PR than I have done in five years on camera, it works. And then another 30 pound PR once I get it used to back squatting. Okay, it builds it. And this builds my box squat. And as we start doing that deeper box, we're going to need all the help we can get. It's, it's challenging. Like that extra inch matters. Especially when we're below parallel, another inch, anything deeper is hard. But I'll master it. I'll master it. We'll get stronger at squatting. And one of the reasons I'm going to do so many bands and changes, I do need to get used to the heavier weight still being up top. Okay, that's going to be important as we get further into it. Going to need to still have heavy weight up top so that, I, again, we get used to feeling that. I'm going to need to get used to feeling above my back squat weight up there again. So we rotate through. And, again, five sets of this. So this is going to be a long video, guys be a long video but you guys already know how I feel about the good mornings these days I feel like it's a critical lift for my deadlift and when I cut it out my deadlift always regresses okay always and it makes sense when you look at it it's so similar to the conventional deadlift and all the muscles involved that this builds the muscles of the deadlift as I've said to many of you if you wanted to build an impressive deadlift just get really really good at good mornings and pin lay rows and if you can get very, very good at both, you'll build a deadlift. You'll build a conventional deadlift off of that. You know, just a little bit of deadlift practice. And I mean, this has been largely responsible for me getting to the 615 that I did right around back in January. So after this, I went ahead and I did my hip belt squats. Man, uh, they were challenging today. Trying to keep focus on getting the belt lower and lower because what ends up happening, if I let the belt ride too high up my sides when I do it, it really, really hurts. And it takes my breath out. And it presses against my obliques and stuff so hard that it makes it hard to breathe. So I'm trying to, again, focus on getting the belt completely around the hips. Um, plenty of experts say to do it that way. Chris Duffin has actually chimed in and specifically addressed that. And while I may not agree with everything Chris says... I think we can agree, universally agree, he is a world-class strength coach. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't take anything he says lightly, even if you disagree with it. You know, he likes them like this. Uh, but sets of 20. And on these, because I kept the weight the same, I'm not ready to try to do a fourth of this set. I went ahead and focused on trying to get deep in the final set. I cranked out a few more reps. And again, trying to get this belt into position. And I felt like since I got a few more reps... I'm going to start trying to increase the weight while maintaining sets of 20. But the goal here is, again, to get that belt low down so that it's on my hips. Trying to get that full range of motion with a wide stance. Because, again, we need that wide stance. We need to build the muscles of the wide stance so I can get deeper and I can get that max squat. So this builds all the musculature of the squat, but with a heavy focus on the quads. And even with a light weight, yes, my quads are lit up. And look at my quads there. I feel like they're growing off of it. I feel like they're growing off of it already in a short, short period of time. This is like my third workout messing with it. They're already growing. So I'll try to increase the weight a little bit and maintain the sets of 20. Because I was able to squeeze out about three or four more reps on the last set. It was almost hard to row afterwards. Because uh, these things, <laughs> my God, do they light the quads up. And it's, I feel the whole quad all the way down to the knee. Like the BMO all the way down to where it inserts in the knee. 
it just feels a pump and it lights up from there all the way up to my hip. Okay, and again, training that wider stance. This wide stance here, this is a wide stance. Everyone thinks my other stance is wide. This is wide. Okay, I need to be able to do this stance with a wonder at max. Now that should be interesting, right? Get to where I can do this stance with a wonder at max and build the musculature of it. And get a nice deep squat with that wide stance. Get all those muscles involved. I think that's going to be part of my key to getting to that 600. Because that 552 was high. I feel like it's an inch high. So climbing to the 600, I'm going to have to work on getting deeper and stronger. And that's going to mean, again, adjusting this stance. And that means building the musculature to handle this stance. We don't necessarily need to do that with just back squats. I can do it off the heavy boxes. I can do it off these. So again, we are training that range of motion. We're training the quads and hips and everything to, to fire correctly in that range of motion. Uh, then we get to the pin laborers. You guys see those 25s added on the sides. All right, we went up substantially. Grip was hard. Not going to lie. Normally, you guys see me do the sets of 15 with about a 15 rep max. Maybe leaving a rep or two in the tank. I can grip them all the way through at least the first three sets. I had to do a lot of regrips. This was tough on the grip. And I could feel the extra weight. Like I felt it in my lats, especially my lower lats, a lot more, which is what I really feel that area light up on the deadlifts when I'm failing. Okay. Because again, that's my back trying to compensate for my hamstrings. But we need to build that area too, because if that's what compensates for a hamstring weakness, you should probably overdevelop it also, even if it is stronger. All right? We address everything. But. These were so much more challenging on both the grip, better in the lats. Now people would say, well, why, why are you dropping the weight back down? Why are you dropping the reps down? Why are you going heavier? I feel like I need more tension now. I, I did a really good phase of doing 15 rep sets, but I do need to make sure that I am getting enough mechanical tension. So 5 by 10 with basically a 10 rep max. Yep, should hit everything the way I want it. And I definitely feel the lats. I definitely feel the grip. Again, taking the grip training up a notch. Again, getting the, the back used to a heavier weight, more tension. You know, we increase work capacity dramatically with those 15s. Now we want to make sure that we're getting all that myofibular growth there that we want. Stuff that gives you the true strength. I'm not saying the 15s won't, because they will. But we did that for a phase. Again, it's time to bring the reps down. Just like I'm doing all my, my other upper body stuff, the pressing is all roughly 10, at most 12. We only do the smaller exercises, higher rep, like triceps, rear delts, you know, face pulls, tricep extensions, curls. All the big movements need to be about 10. They need to be challenging 10 rep sets. And these were, these were challenging. They were definitely challenging. And it's unfortunate. I get people who come in and comment too when we get over to the biceps in a minute. Oh man, you need to work on your biceps more. And they give me bicep advice and then admit that their biceps grow easy. And it's like, guys, if your biceps grow really easy, you do not need to give people advice who do not grow biceps easy. You're the last person in the world. I can tell you right now, a guy's like, oh, if you just did two sets of curls every, every day that you row, your biceps will blow up. And it's like, no, they don't. My biceps will shrink. <laughs> my biceps will shrink. I know my, myself well enough to know how my body responds to a lot of things. And quite frankly, my biceps would actually get smaller. And I think that's where we get into the, the skewed perspective, too. It's also the size of my torso and everything else. Uh, my biceps are probably bigger than you think they are. I'm not saying they're massive. I'm not saying they're 19 inches or anything crazy at this point, because they're not. They're probably bigger than people think. Um, it's just my torso and stuff is that big. Yeah, and so we did these to failure again with the adjustment in the chains occasionally I hit my toe though and that hurts downside of the chains but again took them to failure and I think the hardest set I, it was like 14 reps I think it might have been the very last set I think we got about 18 18 17 and then it started going down so again went ahead and did five sets today try to get five sets to failure uh, again do going to do this three times a week there's going to be days where I only do four you know because again, my biceps feel so fatigued, like I can't really complete another quality set. But today I got five. And again, this is when I do my biceps because I've already done rows. The rows work the biceps. It's a good time to go ahead and make sure that I do them. And it leaves me free to work on pressing muscles. 
Um, my training is slightly upper upper body oriented. You know, a lot of people are like, man, you focus too much on the squat and deadlift and not your bench. I'm like, I have my bench days equal my squat and deadlift days combined now. And some of the smaller upper body muscles and the back, I still train on the squat and deadlift day. So my, my actual training is quite upper body biased at this point. But we still want to get a 600 squat. We still want to get a 650 deadlift, right? We don't want to neglect those. We just put a higher priority towards upper body in the bench. We're just prioritizing it a bit because it is my weakest lift. And so that's why I'm doing that stuff on these days so that I have the other three days purely to focus on pressing related muscles and, and then delts. But all in all, good workout. Um, happy with everything today. Even though I might have in a perfect world wanted to go a hair heavier on the box squat, feel like working off that 11 inch box, that was plenty challenging. That was plenty challenging, and I feel like, um, again, form would have started to degrade quite a bit had I tried to go much heavier. So it was good. It was challenging. We're getting used to the low box. Going to work off different band and chain tensions and just keep getting stronger off that deep box with the slightly wider stance so it'll carry over to my back squat, and we keep working towards that 600 back squat this year. I am going to get it. I'm going to get it one way or another. And then we can worry about trimming some extra body fat now. People always ask that. Like, what's going to be your body fat goal? Where are you going to cart? And it's like, when I get to a 600 squat, I don't plan on losing that much weight necessarily. It's going to, I need to stay in the 220. I just want to be as thick and as lean as I can be in the 220 class, but I need my squat to be at least 600. So we can't sacrifice performance for that. Although people are right, eventually I do need to get leaner to be the best for my class. Okay, that's what we have to do be competitive you want to be the shortest leanest guy in your weight class hypothetically that's a perfect scenario all right guys well that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time